Yeah, so today is huge for uh, QB Cattle Company and our revenue for the year. So today we're going cedar in on our recips, and this is gonna be for our biggest flush. We have a tight window in the year that allows us to capitalize on making uh, show steers at the prime age. Not only the prime age, but this month in breeding is very good conception rates for us. And so a lot of thought, a lot of planning, even a year back uh, goes into what we're starting today. So today is huge. It's also timing. Um, we want to pin the cows this morning while it's cool, but we can't actually start giving the shots and stuff till this evening, this afternoon. That's when uh, we want to start our process and uh, everything's with intention. Everything's on purpose. We got a big day ahead. Uh, I'm pumped up. I love working cows, but I'm a little bit anxious because things have to get done and there's four different places that we have to pin cows on. So hopefully it goes smooth. Look, remember you were mad because you hit that other one and it flew off? Yeah. That's why this one didn't fly off. You literally shot its eyes out. <laughs> Good thing it's not a dove. Hey, throw it and see if Maggie will go get it. No, I want to eat it. <laughs> All right. You don't want to touch it, but you want to eat it? Yeah. All right. Kev, she's going to wash the calves while we're gone. Mm -hmm. So that bull and the one in the green pins, just put them in these two pins. Two yes, sir. Uh, this one, right? Yeah. And the other one behind so that you would... Yes, sir. That way we can bring those calves up, no problem. Okay. Unless if we got a one more empty pin over here, mm -hmm. in the back we can put that one in one of those little pins. On but I don't know, Tayden may have it filled up. We typically don't have mud. This is Pedro and Pat. Pedro is a rock on the cow Big Mac. He's a young bull that we're just starting to uh, breed and use. We're kind of pumped up about him. He had a full flesh mate brother that uh, branded at Houston this year. And now we think he can have a big impact for us by making some steers. And then Pat, she's a registered Brahmin heifer. And as the boys would say, Pedro and Pat are boyfriend and girlfriend. She's one that we're gonna uh, flush and get a lot of babies out of. Hopefully that's the plan. And we like her pretty good so many cows that needed to get work today and it had to be done today because we're setting up for our big flush and we're down an employee because his son had an emergency surgery last night so we're shifting some things around we usually will overnight the collections to the Oklahoma facility to get collected or to get processed but this time Jason's just gonna drive it up uh, tomorrow and so now we get to focus on just getting the cows worked. We got to pin four sets, haul some here to the barn, uh, and then put cedars, uh, give shots, get everybody ready to get set up, and then we'll transfer embryos in a couple weeks. So this is unfortunately part of it, but it's also, if you follow my stuff, you know that I'm not a big proponent in buying heifers if you're trying to not grow your herd, but if you're trying to make money. And the biggest reason is because of the risk. The most risky animal to have a baby is an animal having her first baby. And that's what a heifer is doing. Whenever you buy that heifer, you're waiting two or probably right at two years before she's going to calf. And when this happens, that means you have to wait another year for her to calve again. And then you hope that she's a good mama because she hasn't ever really been a mama because she lost her first one. And if she is, then you get a paycheck at year three and a half. 
if she isn't a good mama and we lose the second baby, then we're three and a half years in, no money and no chance of getting money and you're, it's, you're best off selling that cow and she's not gonna bring a premium because she's not a good mama. So um, a lot of risk involved and it's never a fun day whenever this kind of stuff happens. Yeah, this is, uh, this is my studio. <laughs> it's shaped like this extremely on purpose. It's in this location extremely on purpose. Um, from here, the cattle, we can get them cleaned up in the barn. And once we get them cleaned up in the barn, they come through this pin system one at a time and we'll come out into this pin. It sets where that's north, west, east, and so we'll never be shooting this way. We always want the sun hitting the cattle broadside, and so we want the shadows behind them. Turn cattle out on it once you can't see the rows anymore. Got it. Okay. It, the, the foliage will kind of cover the rows. And, and at that point, whenever you grab it and pull it, if I'd pulled this one right now, the root would come up. But whenever it gets a little more established and I grab a piece of it and pull it, it'll just break off. And that's when you know you can turn cattle on it. About $350,000 down the drain. Yeah. Right here's about five thousand. Well, what? Where's the hogs? Nah, they're just turned into bones now. Right there. <laughs> so that my grandpa owned the stockyards. He's he's owned a few of them. He used to own the one in San Antonio, sold it, and then had the one where I grew up in Hondo when I was about ten. Yeah. He sold it and grabbed uh, and bought the one in Pearsall because there wasn't one in that area of the state. And now my brother owns that, that one. Now, I never liked the commercial side of things like I was explaining in the last video. The profit margins are just so thin. You got to deal with thousands ahead because yeah. you're trying to make $100 ahead pretty much. Yeah. Here, this would be for... for uh, all the QB cattle stuff. All these are champions at major Texas shows. And uh, I'm pretty, pretty proud of, of the kids and the calves. And it's cool because my, my whole life showing, I always wanted to win, I was competitive, but uh, we really, I showed a lot of steers from the sale barn. We never spent a lot of money and so I'd never, had the opportunity to win, um, so I wanted to raise them. And whenever we started having champions that I was raising, it was so fulfilling. Like this one here was the very first one that we had. And his brother is actually part of the family now. His brother uh, married uh, my sister-in-law. Hey, okay. And so I'm known for raising good half-bloods. And so I coined Half Blood Nation. Damn. You gotta get him on there. Yeah. I said, where did you hit it? Because I told you that BB gun may not kill it. Dude, he shot it right in the eye. Do you know how many years in jail that is? No, it's a white-winged dove and you don't have a stamp. I know it's a pigeon because my dad told me. Today is the cedar end day. This is the start of the synchronization process for us. We'll go cedar in, give a prostaglandin shot, and seven days we'll uh, pull that cedar, give them another shot, then in two days after that we'll start seeing heats. 
and off of those heats the following week will transfer embryos. I'm a big proponent of transferring fresh embryos. So simultaneously, we're also gonna be setting up a set of donors this week. Uh, we're gonna be giving them some FSH shots and getting them bred. And those are gonna be the matings that the recipient cows are going to carry. Feel bad for peaches, man. <laughs> One time we were pinning on the four wheeler and uh, I did not want peaches to leave where she was at because she just had a calf. And so we were pinning some other cows Well, she heard them going. So she tried to run with them. And there was a mesquite tree about that big around and she just square up. <laughs> What's next? Unfortunately, we have some sick calves. So we're gonna sort the babies and mamas off. That's why we kinda did what we did there because they naturally did it. Doctor a few of the babies, and then we'll start setting up uh, some of these cows with cedars. All right, so got our cow on the chute. This is gonna be the first step in our synchronization protocol. We're gonna give her a prostaglandin shot. We're gonna give her a cedar that is gonna slow release a hormone for seven days. Uh, and after those seven days, we'll pull the cedar and give her another shot. Actually, I say prostaglandin, but I'm pretty sure it's GNRH. I just got water. These are our cedar guns. We put a little chlorhexidine in the water for sterilization. Once that cedar is in there and we release it, those wings open back up and keep it in place. Bada bing, bada boom. Step one's done, but it all means nothing until we get through about step 10. Hey, thank you all for watching today. Hope you enjoyed watching. I hope you also learned a little bit and stay tuned for the next one where there's more coming your way.